Hey guys, I hope you are doing fine. This is Dr. Simran and you are watching Dentistry. If you are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing and click the bell icon so that you get updates whenever I post a new video. So today's topic is palatal anesthesia. Anesthesia of the heart palate is necessary for dental procedures involving the manipulation of palatal soft or hard tissues. Since the soft tissues in the palatal area is dense and firmly adherent to the underlying bone, so palatal blocks are usually painful. So we will also discuss the steps for the atraumatic administration of the palatal anesthesia in the end. So stay tuned. So now let's first see the greater palatine nerve block which is also called as anterior palatine nerve block. So it is useful in procedures involving palatal soft tissues distal to canine that is the premolars and the molars. So the nerves anesthetized is the greater palatine nerve. So the areas anesthetized are the posterior portion of the heart palate and its overlying soft tissues around the premolar and molar areas and medially till the midline. So now let's see the anatomical landmarks for the greater palatine nerve block. So what are the landmarks? First of all the greater palatine foramen. This is the greater palatine foramen. The maxillary second and third molars. Palatal gingival margins of the maxillary second and third molars, midline of the heart palate and the line approximately 1 cm from the palatal gingival margins of the maxillary molar teeth to the midline of the palate. So if this is the midline of the heart palate, the line approximately 1 cm from this palatal gingival margins towards the midline of the heart palate. So the target area is greater palatine nerve as it passes anteriorly between the soft tissues and the bone of the heart palate. So now let's see the technique for the greater palatine nerve block. So for a right GP block, the right hand administrator should sit at a 7 o'clock or a 8 o'clock position whereas for a left GP, our right hand administrator should sit at 11 o'clock position facing the patient. Now first of all we will have to locate the greater palatine foramen. So how will we locate it? So first of all place the cotton swab at the junction of the maxillary alveolar process and the heart palate and start in the region of the first molar area. So uh, starting from the first molar area proceed posteriorly by firmly pressing into the tissues with the swab. So we will proceed posteriorly by pressing the soft tissues firmly and as you are proceeding posteriorly the swab falls into a depression created by the greater palatine foramina. So this is the depression that the greater palatine foramen makes and the swab will tend to fall in this depression. This foramen is mostly located distal to the maxillary second molar towards the midline about 1 cm from the palatal gingival margins towards the midline. So before injecting, prepare the injection site, clean and dry with the sterile gauze, apply topical anesthetic for 2 minutes and after applying the topical anesthesia, move the swab posteriorly directly over the greater palatine foramen and apply considerable pressure at the area of the foramen with the swab. And when you are applying the pressure over this foramen, you will note ischemia that is blanching of the soft tissues at the site of injection. Now the GP is approached from the opposite side at right angle to the curvature of the palatal bone and the needle is inserted slowly until the palatal bone is contacted. Continue to deposit small volume of anesthesia throughout the procedure and the ischemia spreads throughout into the adjacent tissues as the anesthesia is deposited. This is because of the vasoconstrictor that is present in the LA that we have discussed in a separate video about the composition of LA. Now, as the bone is contacted, aspirate in two planes and slowly deposit approximately 0.25 to 0.5 ml of solution over a period of 30 seconds minimum. Now as the tissue is entered, a slight increase in the resistance to deposition of more solution may be noted. 
So what are the signs and symptoms of this block? There is numbness in the posterior portion of the palate and no pain during the procedure. So what can be the complications of this block? There might be ischemia and necrosis of soft tissues when highly concentrated vasoconstricting solution is added. And there might as well be a hematoma formation but it is quite rare because the density and firm adherence to of the palatal soft tissues to the underlying bone. So now let's see the nasopalatine nerve block which is also called as the incisive nerve block or the sphenopalatine nerve block. So this block provides anesthesia to the anterior portion of the heart palate from the mesial of the right first premolar to the mesial of the left first premolar that is from canine to canine. The soft tissue at this area is dense, firmly adherent to the underlying bone and quite sensitive. So these three factors in combine to increase the patient discomfort during this injection. And the nerve anesthetized is the nasopalatine nerve bilaterally. So the area of insertion is the palatal mucosa just lateral to the incisive papilla that is located in midline behind the central incisor teeth. The target area is incisive foramen that is beneath the incisive papilla. So there is an incisive papilla over here and beneath that this is our incisive foramen which over which we have to inject. And the landmarks are the central incisor teeth and the incisive papilla. The path of insertion, the injection site is approached at the 45 degree angle towards the incisive papilla. So uh, by making a 45 degree angle to the incisive papilla, this injection site is approached. And orientation of the bevel should be towards the palatal soft tissues. And for this nerve block, the administrator should sit at 9 or 10 o'clock position facing in the same direction as that of the patient. Now before injecting, we will prepare the injection site. So prepare the tissue lateral to the incisive papilla and clean and dry with the sterile gauze. Apply topical anesthesia for 2 minutes and after applying the topical anesthesia for 2 minutes move the swab directly onto the incisive papilla and apply pressure to the area of the papilla. And you will note the ischemia at the anterior portion of the palate. So two approaches to this injection are present. The first approach is the label approach. This involves three needle punctures but if it is carried out properly it is significantly less traumatic than the single puncture technique. In this first of all the first injection is the labial soft tissue injection that is the labial soft tissue between the maxillary central incisors are anesthetized and this is our first injection. Then the needle is directed from the labial aspect through the interproximal space between the central incisors towards the incisive papilla on the palate to anesthetize superficial tissues in the area. This is our injection 2 which anesthetizes the superficial tissues in the palatal area. And then the third injection that is directly into now partially anesthetized palatal soft tissues overlying the nasopalatine nerve. Now let's see the second approach. So the second approach is also called as the palatal approach. The tip of the needle is placed in the depression surrounding the incisive papilla and the small amount of solution is injected until the blanching of the papilla is seen that is the uh, whitening of the soft tissue is seen. Now the needle is ad administered into the incisive foramen for about 0.5 cm that is 5 mm into the canal. Now before injecting aspirate in two planes and then slowly deposit the solution in over a period of 15 to 30 seconds. Here we deposit 0.25 to 0.5 ml of solution. What are the signs and symptoms? There will be numbness of the anterior portion of the palate and there is no pain during the treatment. Now cautions that should be taken. Do not insert directly into the incisive papilla. It is quite painful and do not deposit the solution too rapidly or too much solution which is quite painful. 
if the needle is advanced more than 5 mm into the incisive canal and the floor of the nose is entered accidentally infection may result so this must be prevented now what can be the complications there might be a hematoma formation but it is extremely rare because of the density and firmly adherent palatal soft tissues to the bone but there can be necrosis of the soft tissues possibly with highly concentrated vasoconstricting solutions so that is all about the nasopalatine nerve block so to provide less discomfort during palatal anesthesia following things can be done provide adequate topical anesthesia at the site of injection use pressure anesthesia at the site of injection both before and during the insertion and deposition of the solution maintain the control over the needle deposit anesthetic solution slowly and most importantly trust yourself that you can complete the procedure atraumatically so that is all about the palatal anesthesia if you want to know about the buccal anesthesia of the maxillary teeth you can check our other videos i hope you like this video and if you do please show some love by giving it a big thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more such content and do share it with your friends to make their life easier as well remember any kind of feedback is highly appreciated see you until next time thank you